Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on my channel. Bonjour, bonsoir, assalamu alaikum. Guys, I'm buzzing, you know why? Because Algeria are back. Anyway, I hope all your Ramadans are going well, all the fasting is going well, South Doric and all that good stuff. We had to kick off late because of that. We've got a team, they've had no food in their bellies all day. They're still getting dubs. First game for Uncle Vlad, first win for Algeria. Are we back? Okay, let's calm down a little bit. It's only Bolivia, right? It's just some mugs from La Paz and the guy in Barca's beating. Nonetheless, we showed good resilience to come back from behind. We controlled the ball quite well. We scored three goals. And we've won a game against a team who are better in the FIFA rankings than Mauritania. So, Algeria 3, Bolivia 2 in the FIFA series in Baraki, which followed a bit of a surprise draw between South Africa and Andorra, although South Africa did rest a lot of players for the game against Algeria, but they did draw 1-1 to Andorra. So basically, really, if we beat South Africa, we've got the FIFA series wrapped up, which would be a good way to start Petkovic's reign. But still, I, I was saying in the preview, this game was more about testing some new players. I think that's the key. And I was a bit disappointed, I'm not going to lie, when I saw the lineup. It's pretty much the team that lost to Mauritania. It was almost a carbon copy with Guiri, Brahimi and Shaibi thrown in there. Apart from that, it literally looked like the team that went out in AFCON group stage. I'm thinking, why have, why has Petkovic picked Belmadi's team and just had Brahimi captain instead of Mares captain? But nonetheless, he did throw on quite a few subs, which we'll get to later on. So... The team was Mandrea in goal, like AFCON. Really surprised he went eight Nori, Atal, Ben Sabani and Mandy. And really, maybe he felt because it was his first game as a manager, he had to go for the strong team. He didn't want to lose the first game. And even though he did play the main team, he nearly bloody lost it. So he kind of had to do that. Ben Talib and Zaruki. I don't know how old I have to be to see Ben Talib and Awar, not Ben Talib and Awar, Benassa and Awar play together. I mean, what more have we got to cry out for? We're seeing Ben Talib and Zaruki again. I'm getting PTSD. It's the same old mugs that are bottling World Cups, AFCONs and all that. It, clearly, we're not doing anything when Ben Talib and Zaruki play together. They're too similar a role. Only have one of them in there with Benassa and Nawa. I'm not, I'm not asking for much here. You've got Shaibi in front of them, ghosted again. You can see why Belamadi dropped him against Burkina Faso and Mauritania. The guy's a huge ghost. And then you've got Brahimi playing left wing, who I loved. Listen, this guy's an icon. This guy's one of my favourite Algeria players, top three probably, of all time. Guiri was playing on the right, and Bunja was playing up front. I'll be honest, Baghdad was playing like he didn't even have his, his Fedoya, his Iftai. He was playing like on empty. He was nowhere to be seen. And the one chance he did get at the beginning, he hit the post when the keeper was out. So I think Baghdad had a bad day at the office, but you've you got to start him if you if you try the, the main team. Essentially, he did have a good AFCON after all, with three goals in three games. So the game kicks off. Obviously, the stadium was a bit empty. Everyone's praying, everyone's doing tarawih and all that good Islamic stuff. And um, Algeria should have probably taken the lead with that chance. But even the one when Bunja hit the post, Guiri should have put it away. That keeper, why does every keeper seem to have the game of their bloody life every time we play against them? The Mauritania guy, the Angola guy, it happens every time. This Bolivian guy was unreal with some of the saves he was making. Yusuf Atal had that shot in the first half. But for me, the first half was all about Yassine Brahimi. I mean, we, I always used to say back in the day when he would play all the time, you need two footballs when Brahimi plays, one for him and one for the game. He hates passing. It's like it's haram for him to pass. That's what he acts like. But I love the dribbling. He, he doesn't care. He's in the tightest spot. Or try and do some 360 pirouette and try and manoeuvre his way out of it. Which I kind of rate. I kind of love that. So respect to him for that. Honestly, one of my favourite players. And that goal, yes, it had a deflection. Yes, Guiri scored his first goal for the national team. That goal is all Brahimi. And I told you, I'm sick and tired of this use of Bellaini mug. When are people going to listen to me? You, you wouldn't see Bellaini doing that. Bellaini would be out of play. Out of play, pointless dribbles. Brahimi dribbles, takes people on or finds someone. And he's so good at it. Look at his stats in, in the Qatari league this season. Bellaini's having a six-game ban, all right? And he's probably buzzing about it because he can see his dealer again. I'm telling you guys now, Brahimi's the real deal. And then when Brahimi doesn't play there, you can play Ben Rahman there. You can play Almora there. There's many options you can do in that area. Shoki and Elise can come into that area one day. 
But why were we so obsessed with the left side? The, we basically have no right player. Guiri is not a right winger. He was playing out there because we don't really have anyone. We don't have Mares. He didn't even put Buenani in the squad. Uh, the only real right winger that played was Atal when he went forward or Hajimorsa when he came on. But I didn't really rate Hajimorsa when he came on, to be honest. It was a bit like Hajlusa, Hajlusa for me. He had that one run at the end when he was just greedy. He should have passed it. He thought it was Maradona. He wasn't at all, was he? But... It's early days. I didn't like what I saw with him. I like what I saw with, with Monsef Bakra, but, but not with Hajimorsa, to be honest. But we'll get to that. Half-time, we get the goal. Really lucky deflection. But you're thinking Guiri's going to boost his confidence with the goal. Uh, Bunja and Shaibi were, were missing. Had to come off at half-time. And you're thinking, all right, 1-0 up. Maybe we'll start getting some new players into the fold and getting some confidence up, get a clean sheet. But then I remembered, Algeria's last two losses... Uh, Cameroon and not Cameroon was a really bad loss. Sweden Ben Sabani was off, and Mauritania Ben Sabani was suspended. And in this, Ben Sabani came off with a really nasty looking knee injury. This defence collapses without Rami in it. The full backs I'm fine with, Mandy will get to in a minute. When Ben Sabani isn't in there, it collapses. But the problem for me here is you don't call up Tuba. You play two guy who basically gave the goal away against Mauritania. What has Belid or even Madani got to do to get in there? Or even Belid, you've got to give the guy a go. I'm not convinced by two guy. He's living off an Arab Cup. Not for me. But you put him on. 60 seconds, right? Half time done. What we do What's Mandy doing? What's Mandy doing? Your passion merchant. All the passion in the world. The defensive ability of no one. Like, he's really good at being a defender who can pass the ball well. But in terms of actually being good at defending, question, questions need to be asked there, I feel. Shocking back pass. The guy put it away quite emphatically, which is how Baghdad and Guiri should have put it away in this kind of similar situation in the same goal at the start of the first half. 1-1. One, one. Again, Mandrea seems to keep facing minimal shots that he can't do much about. And then we come to the second goal. It's like we can't, the ball comes into the box and we panic. It's the same as the Mauritania game. When Ben Sabani's not in that back line and the ball is in the air, like complete shambles, complete shambles. Unreal save from Mandrea. Unreal, right? The fact that the headers come in is shocking defending, the man marking, whatever. Mandrea does well to save it. And I'm thinking, come on, clear it, lads. Time for the rebound to go in. All of a sudden, we're literally 2-1 down at home to the worst team in South America in Petkovic's first game. It would have kicked off if we'd lost that game. Even if we drew the game, it may have kicked off. So changes had to be made. We see Guiri pulled, even though he scored. Relatively underwhelming performance for me. So Guiri came off. Brahimi, I think, came off because he can't do 90 minutes at 34 years of age. With the intensity of his dribbling, he can't do that much. So the second half, the Algeria attack looked better. We had Amora up there. Benzia came on. I was happy with the changes. We see Bakra come on. We see Hajimusa come on. Uh, we also see Kendusi come on at the end, but we didn't see too much from him. But from 2-1, it was relentless Algeria pressure. And we know mentally and in terms of confidence, we seem to struggle sometimes. But I feel like we showed good resilience and I always felt we were going to score because of the number of chances we were creating. Should we talk about the referee? Because in the first half, we had a clear pen not given on Brahimi. Bunja was asking for VAR again when there wasn't any. The second half, there were two clear handballs not given. Even on the goal, Benzia scored. Half the team were appealing while we were doing an attack. I cannot believe he didn't give a penalty. The hand, it's such a blatant handball. There was one when Amora kicked it on. Literally, the arm is stopping the ball going to our player. How is that a pen and a red? It happened twice. Thank goodness Benzia nodded it away. Can you believe Benzia and Brahimi are here saving us? What a time to be alive, rolling back the years. Unreal. Bakra comes on, assist on his debut. Benzia is almost like a second debut. We could have had Benzia all this time and we had to watch Slimani and Bellaili, and that's just depressing, isn't it? So 2-2, two, two, right place, right time. This Bakra guy looks good. Amora looks very good on that left. He put in a great ball and, and Bakra made the most of the chance. He gets into the, into the good areas. I like him. I didn't really see Hajimorsa, but... Look how, much, how many times the ball was down the left when you had eight Nori there. Brahimi and Amora were like playing each other's position. Brahimi kept moving to false nine. He kept coming back to the left. The right side is Atal with so much space. Honestly, guys, we were more left wing than a communist leader in that game. Unbelievable. It's like 
The left couldn't believe they were getting the ball. Usually the right is Mares, and you think that's the outlet. The left were getting so much love and affection. It was beautiful. It was like a rom-com. So really, really good. But isolating the other side is dangerous. You have Artal going up there to fill the space. If Bolivia get the ball and go down the other way, you're really susceptible on the counter. But in the end, the goal came. Isa Mandy making up for the error, just like the Mauritania game when he kept getting in the box and he had two really good chances. Probably Algeria's two best chances in the Mauritania game to equalise. Mandy actually has a shot, misses it. Well, not misses it. The keeper somehow saves it again. And then he nods in the rebound again. 3-2. You like that. He cares. He is proud to wear the shirt. We win 3-2. Uncle Vlad gets the first dub. Zorgan didn't play. It's a beautiful day. So in the end, we get the win. We've learned a lot about a few players. It'll be really interesting to see the side against South Africa. But I loved the performance of Yassine Brahimi. I liked Benzia. I liked Amora. But Shaibi was underwhelming for me. So there we are. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. We got the win, guys. I'll see you next time.